Dave Cowens and the Boston Celtics spent the week eliminating San Antonio. Meanwhile, George McGinnis and the Philadelphia 76ers were sitting and resting. Today, that rest is over. From the Spectrum in Philadelphia, it's Game 1 Eastern Conference Semifinals. The NBA on CBS. Today's game is sponsored by the totally new Chevrolet. Now that's more like it. Honda Civic sedan, hatchback, and wagon. Honda Civic, what the world is coming to. And by light beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. From the spectrum, it is the series everyone has been looking forward to. The rich, talented, psychoanalyzed, almost daily Philadelphia 76ers against the proud, tough, defending world champion, Boston Celtics. Good afternoon, everybody. Pleasure to be with you. I'm Brent Musburger, and with me, Billy Cunningham. And, Billy, this should be some series. Oh, boy, you can just feel the tension in the air. My palms are sopping wet, and we have some one big change we've seen here with the Celtics today. They're going to start John Havlicek against McGinnis, feeling that Havlicek will take away his quickness. But will he be able to contain him on the boards? And, of course, then in the back line, what about the guard matchups today? Well, JoJo White and Doug Collins, quite a matchup. Collins has been very successful against JoJo. But then again, Collins has to go to the other end and play Charlie Scott. All right, the referees today I see just directly behind me, Richie Jackson, and there you see Joe Crawford, who will toss it up. These are the same two young referees we had last week in Washington. As you look at the starting lineups, have a check, of course, Back up at forward because of the return of Charlie Scott to the lineup. Rowe, Cowens, Scott, White, and Havlicek against McGinnis, Collins, Bibby, Jones, and Irving. An all-star cast. The CBS is pleased to bring you the championship season. And we are underway, and Dave Cowens just sat back and got the second tap and the Celtics control. And it'll be Havlicek with the first shot of the afternoon, and Boston goes up by two. With this matchup, we were talking about Havlicek guarding McGinnis. is going to put quite a bit of pressure on uh, Dr. J getting back on defense and picking up Havlicek. McGinnis comes up on Charlie Scott on the switch and ties it. Both teams hit their first field goal. Cleveland playing Washington. We'll be checking in with Don Cricky and Mindy Rudolph. Then we'll go west for the second game of the doubleheader. We've had our first foul. It's on Julia Serving. Quite a bit of pressure on the officials today. Outside of the spectrum, many of the veteran referees marching with picket signs. Manny Sokol among them as the veterans continue their strike. Back to Collins from Jojo White as he drove to the baseline. The Boston Celtics have turned it over now to Philadelphia, and the 76ers can go ahead for the first time. Something Philadelphia is going to have to do offensively is make Collins guard Colwell Jones. If Colwell Jones is inactive in the offense, Collins is just going to zone the middle and help out his teammates. The swing left side, Irving yeah. up on Havlicek, he's got it. And John fouled him into the line, comes the doctor. And it was just a year ago when Dr. J was playing for the New York Nets and they destroyed Denver to win a championship. So Billy C. Julius has been here before. Well, if Julius can hit that shot, it's going to force whoever's guarding him to play him tight. His game is going to the hoop. Two weeks ago, we watched Hondo Havlicek do a magnificent job against Irving with some very subtle hand checking, denying the ball. Philadelphia hit by three, just underway from the spectrum here in Philadelphia. Game two of the series, Wednesday night, right here. Now it's being watched by Jones, jump hook. It's a one-point lead on the strength of Irving's free throw. Bibby applying offensive pressure. It's one-on-one Gene Shear-style basketball. You will watch this famed Celtic team defense go to work here in the playoffs. Inside to McGinnis, maneuvers on Scott, his second field goal. What the 76ers are doing, they're executing their plays very well. They worked hard this week, and they're causing the mismatch with on McGinnis. Using the Cowan screen, Scott misses. Outlet, the doctor looking for room, and it's all green back on defense. It's Bibby's first shot. Well, the layoff hasn't hurt the 76ers up until this point. Five-point lead as the playoffs in the NBA get underway here with the Eastern Conference semifinal blocked by Jones. 
Bibby pounds it down and applies heat. Here's Collins on the move, left side. What a play. Curtis Rowe across the timeline. And there is a foul. McGinnis, and it's a backcourt violation. He at least had one leg over that line. It will show you what body control is all about. Look at this move by Collins with the left hand. Beautiful. They ruled not in the backcourt because he had that one foot across, so they took it out of bounds. I haven't, seen, it looking in. I haven't seen Philadelphia play defense with this type of intensity all year. So Joe White, and here it is isolated. You can watch his foul. That was good defense by Bibby. He was not allowing him to go where he wants to, and he, he established his position first. 76ers lead early by seven points in the spectrum. Cleveland and Washington underway in Landover. We'll keep you up to date as it's Collins again moving toward the glass. The all-star guard out of Illinois State. It was he Doug driving. I guess Jojo reached in there and got him on the arm. So the Celtics a little shaky here in the early going. And remember, they had to play San Antonio, and they eliminated the Spurs in two games. The 76ers, meanwhile, were resting, and Charlie Scott is arguing with referee Joe Crawford. Scott was kicked out of that second game. Down in San Antonio, JoJo White then picked up the slack, hit 15 field goals. It was a 113-109 final. Here it is a 10-point lead by the 76ers as we are just underway. But the boys defending world champions now. We'll scratch back. And here is Havlicek swinging right side. What can you say about John Havlicek? <laughs> we can hear him, Billy C. Yelling. Watch the three seconds at the other end. The doctor on the miss. And Cowens, as he did so successfully against his first rebound. And now Jojo White with the layup. So just as quickly as you say, a 10-point lead. Back come the Celtics. And they hit two quick field goals. McGinnis calls the play. And Billy C., here's the 76ers' weakness now. Five-on-five five basketball. Right. They have to learn to execute the plays. Debbie, working against Scott Travel, turned it over. It'll go to Boston. Something these officials have to be very concerned about is that it's very possible that a coach like Heinsohn and Gene Shue and some of the players on the court will try and intimidate them. And uh, I'm looking for that to happen if, if Heinsohn gets the feeling that the Celtics are not getting a break here and there. He'll surely get a quick technical. Cowan's rolled off the pick. Now the other side, Scott misses. Jones was there for an easy rebound. Doug Collins is getting down the floor in a hurry. McGinnis didn't want him. And Collins comes over with a defensive play against McGinnis, swatting it away. Celtics back to Hondo. Knocked away by Jones at the other end. And there is a foul. It will see Collins and what we were talking about, him able to help out his teammates defensively. He makes a fine block. Yeah. And the key to that play was he kept the ball in play and the Celtics were able to get to the other end. And Havlicek here with a chance to get convert two foul shots. That's a record for playoff appearances. More playoff games than any man in the history of the NBA. And still going strong at age 37. The Celtics have rattled off five straight. Back with six straight. And it is a 14-10 game. So what was once a 10-point lead has dwindled now to four. Great pass to Collins, and Collins had defensive position. Outside, Irving gave it up to Doug Collins coming down, and there's an offensive foul call, and I agree with him. I thought Jackson was right. Well, this is where the referees have to be strong. They will see the pass to Collins, and he just ran right into JoJo. And again, we can see, Billy, see what you pointed out. They're trying to intimidate these two young officials from the Eastern League. Collins out away from the basket. They'll take every edge they can get. This is best four out of seven time. Knocked out of bounds by the 76ers, and the men in green from Boston will keep it. And don't forget, Cleveland, Washington. Then a little bit later, it is Detroit, Golden State, and Portland, Chicago. And CBS will keep you informed on everything. Collins rolled up the hook. 76ers back. They've given up the last six points now. Here's Bibby. And Bibby ends that string of Celtic points. 
The new witch getting ready to check in. Stepped on the out of bounds line. And Wicks has checked in. And Rowe, who did not handle the ball very often, goes over to Tommy Heitzen's bench. And number 12, Sidney Wicks, who hit a blistering 72% against San Antonio. And Billy C., his first playoff appearance. Such a great ball play. Never had the opportunity to when he was in play. Maybe two in a row. What a find for the 76ers. A fellow that went to training camp and he was questionable if he would even make the squad. Here he is starting for them in the playoffs. And it was an eight-point lead. And Hondo maneuvers. He's short. Charlie Scott almost gave the Celtics a second chance. Quickly to Collins. Intercepted by JoJo White on the pass off by Collins. Now it is Doug who comes right back. It's three on one. Collins goes in. And Collins... Let it go out of bounds. Dave Cowens got a hand on it. What a great defensive play by Cowens. He forced Cowens to commit himself in the air. Never left the feet. Never left his feet. Great play. The crowd in the spectrum loving it so far. We've got a timeout. 76ers up by eight. No American car has ever had EPA mileage ratings as high as this car. Where is Elm Street? new Chevy Chevette. Want to buy some homemade cookies? 43 miles per gallon highway, 31 miles per gallon city. Where are your restrooms? Chevy Chevette, America's modern gas mileage champ. Just want to use your payphone. It'll drive you happy, unless you own a gas station. And it's another homer for Johnny Bench. I've always believed you should do the best you can. That's why I feel good about recommending Batter Up to the parents of Little Leaguers. It's the best kind of batting practice for youngsters. It improves timing and helps develop a level swing. My name's on Batter Up, and I believe in it. I won't promise it'll make your youngster a big leaguer, but you never know. Batter Up by Phonus, the good sports. CBS Sports presents Farrah Fawcett Majors taking the court against Bill Cosby. Ed Asner is coach Bob Reiner at the marathon race. And Penny Marshall versus Robert Conrad on the obstacle course. Just a few of the stars on the high-spirited special Celebrity Challenge of the Sexes, Sunday at 8, 7 Central Time. We are back now in the spectrum. The Philadelphia 76ers with a quick lead on the Boston Celtics. And there is Billy C's number, which was retired here earlier this year. And, uh, Billy, I detected this morning that you would prefer to be out there playing as the playoffs get underway. Oh, boy, you know, you, all year I just I felt I didn't miss the game too much, to be perfectly honest. But once the playoffs started and you get that feeling in your blood, and this is what, as an athlete, a ball player, you've worked all your life to achieve this, the possibility of getting that ring on your finger. Right now it is Philadelphia trying to get... A ring. A ring the Boston Celtics won last year. Short by McGinnis. Charlie Scott now. Checking to the right. Libby Harris again. Staying right with him. Now it's Hondo Havlicek. Now into the screen and they go Scott right side. Down from the corner. So they're keeping the Celtics out away from the basket. Not giving them easy layups. The thing the 76ers are doing, something they haven't done all year, is getting back on defense as a unit. They usually get one or two players back on defense. Today, all five of them are getting back. Now let's see, Billy, what Philadelphia can come up with five on five. Remember, they're not good at this style of basketball. They prefer one-on-one. -on -one. Now it is Collins backing in, maneuvering on JoJo White. Looks very strong, Billy. Well, Doug, Doug is ready to play, and Doug can, is a performer under pressure. We'll see quite a bit of him going down low against JoJo. He has a few inches on him, and he feels that he can... He has a great deal of confidence when he plays against JoJo. So now it is Wicks with a dunk. And there it is. Washington with an early lead. This is the deciding game. Best two out of three. And Houston awaits the winner. And we'll be going down to Landover to keep you up to date on all that action. And then the West Coast game. As the playoffs heat up. Foul is called JoJo White. That is three fouls on White. Here we see a fine pass by McGinnis. JoJo was trying to front Collins, and 
Giorgio had no choice but to foul him, and of course he fouled for the Celtics. Irving maneuvers for the turnaround. And look at Caldwell Jones. Well, that's what happens when Towns is trying help, helping to help out his teammates. It leaves Caldwell Jones free to go to the offensive boards. Allen responds. It will see Cowan standing there in the middle helping out, not aware of Polo Jones, and there he goes. Turnover at the other end. Back now come the Celtics. It's 22 to 14. 440 to go in the first quarter from the Spectrum. This Philadelphia's defense, keeping the Celts out of the perimeter. Boston trying to get some easy shots. And we've had a three-second violation and a turnover. It's surprising to me Heinsohn hasn't gone to his bench to get JoJo out of there. Give Kevin Stakem a couple of minutes here. JoJo playing with those three fouls and Gene Shu pleased with how the 76ers have responded to this game one of the Eastern Conference semifinal. Holland. Boy, he wants it. Well, they're going to him every time down the court. He's going down low, setting up and looking for that ball. He has scored nine points here in the first quarter. Now here are the Celtics being forced outside at the perimeter by this tough 76er defense so far. Scott trying to get in. Going to come the other way. That was frustration. Trying to get down there and do something against Collins offensively after he got Charlie got burned to the other way. So with the offensive foul against Charlie Scott. Now Heinsohn trying to arouse his team. He's over there and Jackson <laughs> dropped his whistle. I think he may have been get. Yes, there's a technical. On the Celtic bench, would have been called a few moments earlier, but he dropped his whistle. Well, it took him a little longer than I thought it would to get that first technical. Here's Tommy. He's asking him if he needs to ride to the airport after the game. Collins, <laughs> with his tenth point, adds the technical. 25-14, and four minutes to go in the first quarter. Heinzen was in a bad mood before the game. He jumped on me in the locker room and said I didn't tell him what time they were going to tip off. I almost gave him his first one there. Here's Julius out high. So the 76ers looking awesome. Jimmy. Now it is Hondo Havlicek. He and Collins will try to calm things down. Off of Collins' his leg. Celtic retained possession. Boy, Sidney Wicks has had the only easy hoop for Boston here in the early going. There he is. Defense was not the trademark of the 76ers, but they have come out with the intensity that is necessary for the playoffs to play defense. Sidney Wicks responding again with that short jump shot. 25-16 as we come inside at 3 30. Cleveland and Washington. Cleveland trailing Washington early. We'll be going to Landover. Traveling is the call. Guinness and the 76ers have turned it over. The one problem when you isolate it, one individual down low, Doug Collins is going very well, but it takes everyone else out of the flow of the offense. Julius Irving, we haven't seen him do a thing except he did that three-point play. He has not even touched the ball. Now, if a player is not active in the offense, this could hurt later on in the game. Set up a deep screen, and the Celtics miss. They're not working any of their back door, not getting their easy layups. And suddenly the 76ers at the perimeter are starting to shoot some bombs. But they're controlling rebounds, and that was going to be a big factor in this series. And we've got traveling called again by Richie Jackson. We've had quite a few walking violations called on the 76ers in this period. Three, three walking violations. Timeout here in the spectrum. 2.57 left in the first. 25 to 16, Philadelphia leading. Honda's always been the leader in dependable four-stroke motorcycles. And way out here, that's important. Going strong now. For dependable, economical four-stroke motorcycles, Honda's number one. Moving right along. Honda keeps you going strong, no matter where you're going. Going strong now. Moving right along. When you're on a Honda, you're really going strong. You're the guy that sells Delco Big D shock absorbers? Right. Good. I got big problems. Everyone's complaining. I need good shock for the entire circus. Can you do it? Well... Good. We'll help. 
AC Delco has extra capacity Delco Big D shocks for just about anything, from small cars to light trucks, plus Big D heavy duty and air shock systems for the really big jobs. AC Delco has Big D shocks for everything on the road. Well, almost everything. We played great as a team. I operated the offense. And I directed the defense. And now we both drink light beer from Miller. Not just because it tastes great, but also because it's got one-third less calories than their regular beer. It's less filling. Hey, bartender, two more lights here. What's it all mean, Casey? Simple, Sam. If, if you, you want, want to keep, to keep up, up with the, the Joneses, Joneses, you, you better, better drink, drink light, light beer. beer. <laughs> light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And less. Paul Taylor, dead for two minutes. Now the dead compel him to return to protect the living from the unexpected, the strange, the terrifying. For the first time on television, the world of the dead, the world of darkness. Sunday at 10, 9 Central. Here in Philadelphia... The Sixers lead 25-16. Let's go to Don Crickey for a report on Washington Cleveland. Jim Jones. Jim Jones just hit two points here at the Landover Maryland Arena. We'd like to welcome those of you who've been watching Boston at Philadelphia. That's how it stands right now. Washington is leading Cleveland 23-12 with 3.20 to play in the first quarter. The Bullets have been shooting spectacularly. That was Phil Chenier. The Bullets are in the white uniforms. Cleveland with the ball in the gold and maroon. Cleveland has had a great deal of difficulty getting the ball inside. They've been taking outside shots for the most part. Four shots like that one that missed everything by Jim Brewer. Washington has been commander of this game. That's exactly what happened. You saw another bad shot by Cleveland. They just cannot get the ball down low. When they get the ball down low, they have a chance to score. Washington has been successful in doing so. 2.50 to play in the first quarter. Janeer puts it up off the run. 27 to 12 is the score. Back in the spectrum, we have not had a point scored. White, Julius, and Havlicek all missed, but you missed an awesome offensive rebound by one Dave Collins. The Celtics could not convert, but he came back from that timeout with fire in his eyes, Billy C. He sure did, and then after he missed that shot, McGinnis had fire in his eyes and went off the board. And Wicks hits again. He has come off the bench to score three field goals already. 146 left in the first period. It is a seven-point lead, and Charlie Scott checking that clock. The defending champions against the rich men from Philadelphia. Julius, and as he went in the air, Freddie Saunders, number 20, fouled him. He has checked in for Tommy Hatchett. Billy, you made a very good point about Gene Shue's bench as we see Steve Nix, number 50, check in. Well, the, the point here is that all year long, the 76ers have played a saggy type of defense. Today, they've come out, they've been playing very intensely. They've been getting back on defense as a unit, but now... I wonder if they're, they'll be able to maintain this throughout the game and if their bench is really going to have to come in and add something to this team. That's four points for Dr. J, a three-point play earlier. See how he closed out the season so magnificently. Now the Celtics come back. Welcome to those of you watching Cleveland, Washington. The Boston Celtics with the ball are behind the Philadelphia 76ers right now with 120 left in the first. Undo have to check up off the rim. And back come the 76ers. Only they have retained possession, hit last by Boston. Referee Richie Jackson working this game with Joe Crawford. It's Henry Bibby, 14 in the backcourt with Doug Collins and Gene Shu, the Philadelphia coach. And Billy, the 76ers have played some kind of defensive game so far. Beautifully. Inside for the doctor. Four points already. Against Saunders, make it six. I think that's the X on the floor where Collins and Irving and McGinnis have been going to post up. Every one of them, their plays are designed to get them free and get them in position down low. This is game one of the Eastern Conference semifinal, and that's where the Celtics have been shooting from. Saunders hit that one, but they have been missing from that point. We come down to 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Irving fires up a miss at his 28-26er. Chance for the 
three-point play by Steve Mix. Sonder, two fouls in a hurry. Oh, perhaps the best third forward in the NBA at the free throw line. How many teams Billy C would he be starting for? Oh, boy. He, Steve has been in his slump the last couple of weeks, and I'm sure that the opportunity to get in the playoffs and have a chance to win, he'll be out there playing very well for this team. Last shot time for the champions in green. See when they start the attack. It'll be Sonder. And Wicks controlling the offensive board. Should have had the basket that time, Billy C. was all alone under there. He sure has, but that's the first or second offensive rebound for the Celtics this quarter. And the reason for that, they're shooting all perimeter shots. The 76ers are getting good position on the defensive boards, and they have to penetrate or create more situations offensively for themselves. Those three seconds left in the first quarter. Sidney Wicks, formerly of Portland, his former team playing Chicago later today. CBS will be there, along with coverage of Detroit Golden State. It's a doubleheader. It's money time in the NBA. Sankoff telling the crowd in the spectrum that this is the penalty shot, which Wicks makes. So it is 31-22. Three ticks left. Will not get it off in time. We've come to the end of the first quarter here in the spectrum. And the thing that impressed me the most was the way Gene Chu's team came out and played defensive basketball. Let's see how the champions counter in the second quarter. Mr. Sun Tech Bo will now show you the powerful Cobra Punch. Yeah! Punch through with a Cobra CB and be heard loud and clear. Handsome exterior belies powerful interior that consistently covers much distance because Cobra made to deliver a powerful punch. Also, made to take punch. Punch through loud and clear with a Cobra. Hi. I don't drive that way out on the streets and please don't you either. You know the old gray ghost here? Well, inside she runs like a top. That's why the folks at STP hired me, because they know I take good care of my own cars, including my new family wagon here, and I use STP oil treatment in all of them. They want me to tell you why? I'll tell you why. On account of it works. And that's the name of that tune. Basketball may seem as simple as throwing a ball through a hoop, but it takes a lot of know-how to keep making those shots game after game. I'm Doug Collins with Philadelphia 76ers. It takes know-how to stay healthy, too. And your American Heart Association leads the league in helping all hearts, young and old. You can do your part by helping the American Heart Association with a generous contribution. Remember, we're fighting for your life. The preceding public service message has been brought to you in cooperation with the National Basketball Association. The man who spent the millions to bring together Julius Irving in Philadelphia, Fitz Dixon. Seated alongside of him, his wife, Edith. They sit right behind the basket to my left, and they stay in close contact with this team. Fitz was in the 76ers locker room two hours before game time, checking on Julius Irving's injured left foot. Julius says he feels fine. He took some heat treatment administered by trainer Al Domenico. Number 20 is Doug Collins, Caldwell Jones. If he can do that, he's gonna real. That's really gonna hurt the Celtics because Cowens will not be able to help them out defensively. The Celtics hit only 36 percent against that tough Philadelphia defense in the first quarter. The 76ers hit 56 percent, and again the Celtics are forced to shoot it outside. Cowens hits one. But you are so accustomed to watching the world champions work a streak where they get layups. Lloyd Free and Collins, Mix, Irving and Jones, Stakem, White Wicks, Cowens and Rowe for Heinsohn. Stakem is 27. Inside to Sydney. Missing underneath, but he's getting open. Here's Collins breaking left wing. Up over Jojo with those three fouls. 
Curtis Rowe with control. Quick pass up court to JoJo White. But still, Philadelphia is back defensively, as Billy C. pointed out early. A change for Gene Chu's team. Boy, do they look tough on defense. Collins and Stakem, though, hitting outside. Right now on defense, the 76ers, what they do is they force the Celtics out as far as they can. Then they sag off and they're trying to zone and help out as much as they can the other players. That was Gene Shu who stood up and detected something and brought Philadelphia over. Not too happy with how his teams played offensively here early in the second quarter. I'd like you to meet the Landon family at home. I took their pictures with my little Kodak Tele Instamatic 608 camera. You know, it's like having two cameras in one pocket because it takes big, colorful pictures two ways. Telephoto and normal. Look, here's my wife, Lynn, and daughter, Shauna. Normal and Shauna, telephoto. Here's Mike Jr., Christopher, Leslie, and Shauna, normal. And Christopher, telephoto. Make the most of the times of your life. Own your own Kodak Tele Instamatic camera. You're the pro, George. I need some new tires. What kind should I get? You're holding the answer in your hand. <laughs> That's why tires? Turn it around, Frank. Dunlop. Dunlop tires, of course. Sure, Dunlop's one of the largest tire manufacturers in the world. That means a lot of people are putting a lot of trust in Dunlop on the road. When you want to get more out of your drive, see a pro. That's me. See your Dunlop pro. If you like us on the fairway, you'll love us on the freeway. With an ordinary credit card, we're going to prove that Edge lets you shave closer than the leading foam. First, listen to an unshaven face. Now we'll shave the left side with foam, the right with Edge. Edge lubricates as it lathers so we can press harder to shave closer than foam. Now listen to the foam side. Then listen to the Edge side. Foam. Edge. Edge lets you shave closer than the leading foam. Next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports Spectacular presents live the World Full Contact Karate Championships with Superfoot Bill Wallace defending his title and the Super Bowl of Motocross, the biggest motocross event in the world. And we'll have the Human Fly attempting to stand atop a jetliner while in flight. And the finals of the CBS Virginia Beach Classic. That's next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. 10.33 left in the first half. And Billy, Jimmy the Greek just told me that Joe Namath is going to sign before the draft with the Los Angeles Rams. And Jimmy also has something to say about the Oklahoma football team. That's coming up at halftime on CBS. Cowens jumped out. There was a foul. Caldwell Jones reached back in. Two shots. And it's a backcourt foul, but I'll tell you, credit the redhead. That's right. Here we'll see. Pass by Irving, bad pass. Cowan's hustling, and there it is. Caldwell Jones just, just didn't have a chance for it and running into Wicks. Three fouls on Caldwell Jones. Which shoe is now talking to Julius at the other end. Not happy about that play. Harvey Catchings will be coming in. They're going to give Caldwell Jones a rest. There's the doctor. With the head man. I feel a little lit down on the part of the 76ers right now defensively. They just don't seem to have that intensity they they came out with in the first couple minutes of the game. Well, I'll tell you, Bibby was a key man, and he's on the bench right now with free, Billy. See, I don't want to put the burden on Lloyd as he comes back Stein with what he does so well. Give him the bucket, says Joe Crawford. And there's a loose ball foul on Julius Irving. Washington. Looking to advance and meet Houston, opening up a lead against Cleveland in the first. So give that foul to Julius Irving. It's loose ball on the side. The field goal counts by Lloyd Free. So it's 35-28. Cowens is all over the floor trying to bring himself. Turned it over this time, and now it's a foot race. Cowens back on Jones. Cowens fouled him, and he stopped short of going into the crowd. He's just mad at himself right now that he committed that silly turnover. Here he is, and you never could say anything about Cowan's not giving 150%. Did you 
you read that story where he was driving that cab in Boston last week? I said, uh, David, you got a taxi for me after the game? He said, don't you dare use that story on television. Well, so, Dave, I uh, He not told me why he, he said that. He heard you were a poor tipper. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dr. J goes out right now. So, let me set the Philadelphia lineup. This, of course, is Jones shooting the free throws. Mixed free. Collins snaps in with the interception. And Stakem tips it back to Collins. Two good defensive efforts. Back quickly in there is McGinnis. We've had three quick turnovers. Big George in the middle. Off the mix. And Collins with control. Curtis Rowe finally off. Well, the game is getting a little sloppy, a little out of hand. They're going to have to get control of themselves, both teams. They're just working a little too hard. Jones controls the defensive board after the miss. So now it is free in that backcourt with Collins. McGinnis, Jones, and Mix up front. And Sydney is all over Mix. And it was pushing as free was backing Stakem in. So that's the one-on-one -on -one style that Billy C. talks about so much. Give the ball to one of the 76ers, let him back in, go one-on-one, -on -one, drew the foul as Harvey Catchings replaces Caldwell Jones. As I said, if you're not converting that, it, you're really in trouble because everyone else is, is not part of the offense. They're standing around just watching you do your thing. And they don't know how to react to when you're going to shoot the ball. A three with two misses and McGinnis offensively controlled and went back up. Big George, formerly of Indiana of the ABA. This is his second year here in Philadelphia. Hooked by Collins. Catching. Dislocated that elbow. That's why his right arm is still heavily taped. And we're in the elastic cap. Outside, McGinnis misses. Collins outlet to stake him. And again, look at the white jerseys back on defense. Here is Jojo. And catching for the second defensive board. Collins on the fly. Bounce pass right side. And Doug is underneath. So they're getting offensive rebounds. Well, the Celtics have to regroup now. They're just not executing their break right. They're not getting back on defense. They're not blocking out on the, on the offensive boards. And if they don't do that and keep the kids off the boards, they're really in serious trouble. Tommy Einstein wants a timeout because of that problem, Billy. Eight minutes and 15 seconds to the half. Want to lift America? Climb into a 77 Camaro. Camaro is a driver's car. Low in profile and wide between the wheels. A spirited, responsive road car that feels as good as it looks. A lift, America, not just a ride. Sample it yourself. Test drive a spirited 77 Camaro at your Chevrolet dealers now. Bernie's been leaving the house with a smile ever since he started getting stroked in the morning. I've never been stroked quite like this before. The new Big Shaver is so responsive, it turns shaving into stroking. That's because it's so light and maneuverable. What's more, the Big Shaver is cheaper than blades. It's a stroke of genius. Looking good, Bernie. Well, I really got stroked this morning. The new Big Shaver. Lots of great shaves, then on to the next. It's the stroke of genius. For my money, a lawnmower has to work year-round, like my Toro Grassmaster. I use the rear bag to pick up clippings in the spring. In the summer, I remove the bag, and the Grassmaster lets me mulch. In the fall, it even picks up leaves. And it does all this season after season after season. Haven't you done without a Toro long enough? This Friday at 11.30 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports will present NBA Playoff Action. Followed on Sunday at 1.30 p.m. by a playoff doubleheader. That's NBA Playoff Action Friday night at 11.30 and a doubleheader on Sunday, tipping off at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Whatever it is, Doug Collins should sell it. He has scored 12 points here already, and the 76ers lead by that margin. Their largest of the game. Meanwhile, Washington is up on Cleveland. That's the deciding game. The Cavaliers could be eliminated. Tommy Boswell has checked in. Look at that screen. Both arms out wide. No one was coming past him. That's JoJo's fourth point. 
Curry penetrated and gave it back to McGinnis. Here's Lloyd. Wants that jump shot. Loose ball foul. Here's that screen, Billy. Marty Boswell. Setting that good pick. And JoJo. Boy, Boswell had his arms extended like he was going to take off down there. McGinnis and Mixed play a little catch on the inbounds. And it is free, jumping up into JoJo White. And that would be oh. his fourth foul. There's the Washington score. I thought JoJo might have had position. It appeared that way to me. Seems like he just kept his hands down into his side and was trying to, he realized that he was isolated and he was just not going to commit that fourth foul because JoJo is a smart player. Stakem replaces JoJo. So White leaves with seven minutes and 42 seconds left in the first half with four personal fouls. Three hits this one. 11 points. That's the margin right now. The 76ers were favored from anywhere to four to six points. Rowe looks into Hondo on the move. And Mix gives it off to Collins. Look at Collins move. Take him on that play, just did not stop Doug Collins' penetration. He just allowed Doug to take it right to the basket. Game one, and you've got to win four as Stakem will come to the line, draws the foul from three. Here we'll see Doug coming down the middle, no one picking him up, just goes straight to the hoop. Fine move. Stakem at the free throw line. Seven eleven until the half. Red on round ball with Red Arback. Jimmy the Greek will be coming your way. Back to ten. Celts trailing by those five field goals. I really expected Boston to be able to run. Their fast break against the 76ers would be very effective, but they haven't been able to do that up to this point. McGinnis muscling in to stake them, and offense is the call. He pushed into Kevin as he tried to get to the basket. Here we'll see George. Now watch his left arm. He pushed off on stake. Now there's two reasons I was saying, Brent, why the Celtics aren't breaking. Number one, the 76ers are pounding them on the offensive boards. They're just dominating both ends of the boards. And also, the 76ers are getting back on defense so well, which it, it shocks me to tell you the truth. McGinnis left Billy because of three personals. So he's taking a breather, and Julius is back working with Nick's at forwards. Collins knocks it away from Charlie Scott. Gets a nice round of applause for that hustle at the baseline. Here we'll see Charlie trying to isolate on Doug, and Doug just reaching in with those quick hands and getting a piece of the ball. That's not Charlie's game to be isolating down low, though. Charlie wants to be out on the court and be able to penetrate, create a situation for himself or one of his teammates. Inbounds play for the Celtics. Welcome to those of you who are watching Cleveland, Washington. There's the situation here as Charlie Scott hits, makes it an eight-point Philadelphia lead with six minutes and 33 seconds to go until the half. The story has been rebounding. The 76ers 24, the Celtics 15. And remember, the Celtics out-rebounded San Antonio in the miniseries. Lloyd Free inside. Also, JoJo White on the Celtic bench with four fouls in the first half. Now, that situation was caused because of lack of communication between the two Celtics. As, as we'll see here, both players switch out. John committed himself, and there's Lloyd Free for the easy two. Another stat. Only two points for Charlie Scott. It's free. Goes in and uses the glass. You see the after, what the absence of Dave Cowens does to the Celtics. Now you see the 76ers taking it all the way to the basket, penetrating and getting the easy shots or being on the offensive boards. Boy free, oh, legs going one way, body the other. So we've got 5.54 to go in the first half. It's the Sixers 47, the Celtics 35. All right, now we've got an argument involving Philadelphia with Richie Jackson protesting about the possession right now. Gene Shue has come off the bench. He's there at midcourt. 
Now Tommy Heinsohn. I want to make sure that that basket was scored. Heinsohn looking up at the scoreboard, saying, is it up there? 47-37. 5-54. A game like this shows me why the Celtics are so great, and they have, have, and they have been for the last, well, I can't remember when they were ever poor. Great move by, by Lloyd Frank. But the reason is that they have not played well up to this point, Frank, and they're able to keep themselves in the game. Billy, the only problem with what the 76ers are doing right now is that the rest of the team disappears when Lloyd Free comes down here and goes one-on-one -on -one all the time. That's right. Here we'll see Lloyd Free beating Stakem and getting fouled. Now Curtis Rowe checks in. I'm going to set these lineups. We've had so many substitutes. Here is Curtis Rowe with John Havlicek, Dave Cowens, Charlie Scott, and Sidney Wicks. Julius Irving, Harvey Ketchum, Lloyd Free, Doug Collins, and Steve Mix. Collins yelling to Free just to relax and take it easy at the line. Having some problems shooting his free throw. We've got 5.40 to go in the first half. It's a 10-point Philadelphia lead. Now it's 5-on-5 five five for the Celts, who've not been able to get a break going. Here's Hondo sliding down so easily that left baseline in his 166th NBA playoff game. Red Auerbach told me this is the best of the last three years John Havlicek has played for the Celtics. And he's 37 years old. Now the 76 has set the play. Contact underneath on Sidney Wicks, away from the ball. Okay, here's Sidney keeping a hand there and a little more body checking than the referee felt that was necessary. I think Julius wisely got the referee's attention, Billy. You could see him yelling over there. Richie, watch me. And at the line, Julius extends the 76ers' lead to nine points. So Philadelphia continues domination here. Let's go to Don Cricky in Washington. I'd like to welcome those of you who've been watching the Boston-Philadelphia game. Here at Landover, Maryland, the Cleveland Cavaliers in the dark uniforms are behind, as you see, 48-31. to 31, With four minutes and 22 seconds to play in the first half. Cleveland continues with very poor field shooting. And the Cavaliers, with Campy Russell, the free throw line, getting two free throws, now come back 48-33. to 33. Both teams have been going to the bench often. Cleveland coach Bill Fitt trying to change the chemistry in his offense to get the ball inside and get some percentage shots. The Cavaliers have persisted in throwing up long, low percentage shots, and they've been missing them. Henderson's played a great game, the man who just took that shot. Elvin Hayes is on the bench, however, for Washington. One unpositive development. And you see his personal foul problem. Five personal fouls. Four fouls, actually. That was an incorrect. Four fouls on Elvin Hayes at this point. And we have Brooks Walker at the free throw line now for Cleveland. It's 50 to 33, Washington. Thank you, Don and Mindy. Back in Philadelphia. The Celtics with two field goals. Philadelphia with one. They picked up two points while you were away. And a chance to cut further into the lead. Foul was called by Joe Crawford underneath on Harvey Ketchings. Havlicek hit a field goal. Doug Collins responded. And then Scott came right back. And now in the spectrum, we've got a timeout. Assistant coach Jack McMahon alongside Gene Shu. Dave Collins goes over to Tommy Eitzen. Four minutes left in the first half. Man, I'm thankful I've got this new air conditioner to carry a year-round one. You mean this new heater, the year-round one? Wrong, Francis. Carries year-round one as an air conditioner, and it's one of the best. Roger, you've been out in the Texas sun too long, my boy. The year-round one's a heat pump, and it heats. Francis, you must scram without your helmet again. The year-round one cools efficiently. It's an air conditioner. Roger, if the year-round one is an air conditioner, then how come it can save you up to 60% on your electric heating bill? Fran, it's an air conditioner. Roger, it's a heater. Air conditioner. Heater. Turkey. Introducing the Carrier Year-Round One. 
a heat pump air conditioner that cools in summer as efficiently as most air conditioners. Yet the Carrier Year-Round One can save you up to 60% on your electric heating costs. Carrier's Year-Round One. It's an air conditioner that heats. See your Carrier dealer. He's in the yellow pages under air conditioning. Dong Launch, Sea of Japan. The Navy, see a recruiter or call toll free. It's not just a job, it's an adventure. CBS Sports presents Para Fawcett Majors taking on Bill Cosby. Penny Marshall challenging Robert Conrad. Red Fox queuing up against Roz Kelly. Phyllis George versus O.J. Simpson. These stars and more in a high-spirited special, Celebrity Challenge of the Sexes, Sunday at 8, 7 Central Time. I think I'll ask Jimmy the Greek about Farrah Fawcett Majors at halftime. Find out what she's going to do on Celebrity Challenge. And yes, Jean Hsu has been sitting astride the whirlwind all season long. They'd still be complaining about you if the Philadelphia team had won every game of the year. Now we've got four minutes left in the first half. His team in command against the defending world champions, 52-44, making 45. Sylvester Dobson, the third official. You can tell the veterans are on strike. The alternate doesn't even get a front row seat here. <laughs> now it's adds still another free throw. Now it's a six-point lead. So the Celtics have had nothing but problems, and they are right in this basketball game, Billy C. Jojo hasn't played more than five minutes in this first half. And here they come. Curtis Lowe. Off now to Scott. Boy, three, staying with Charlie. Well, let's see what kind of a play they can set up. It'll be Wicks giving it off to Hondo. Hey! Catching with control. On the move is free. Good pass to Collins. That's Freed's best pass of the game. He was looking for somebody that time. Perfect execution. And Even though the Celtics didn't score the last time down the court. Did you see that ball move? It was Charlie Scott had it over to Wicks. Wicks took it alone that time on a strong move, Billy. It was the Lloyd Free fine bounce pass there to Collins for the two points. Wicks is at the line as Free picks up his second personal here in the first half. And then tough game defensively. A lot of fouls called by these two officials who are staying right on top of the action here. I'll tell you what, these two young officials out of the Eastern League aren't afraid to stand in there and take a little heat from these guys. There's a lot of money at stake now. Well, you notice it's toned down. We haven't seen the coaches up screaming and yelling as we did earlier in the game or the players. They they have got the respect of the players at, at this point. On the turnover. Irving right back. The doctor. Boy, I'll tell you, Collins cleared Scott out of there. He wanted position, didn't he? Charlie was very upset on the last play. He said somebody grabbed his arm. That's why the, the pass went to straight. Now the Celtics go to work with 2.40 to go in the first half. Please, please, please. Catching's out on Collins. Keeping the Celtics out away from the basket and too much contact that time. Free protesting. That's his third personal foul. Billy sees Julius trying to get open. Bad bounce pass hitting him on the shins, and then there, there's where Charlie said he was fouled. Lloyd Free grabbed him right on the arm. Billy, the difference so far in this game, and a lot of ones that I watched during the regular season, is the tough man-to-man -to -man defense. Guys are all over each other out here so far. Oh, and another big difference, Brent. Early, the 76ers were predominantly a fast-break team all season. If they were going to win, it would see a score of Washington 54 and Cleveland 40. That can tell you. And now we see them, even though they're playing a little one-on-one, -on -one, they've been able to execute and do what they're supposed to do. Now, Gene Shue, it shows you what a, a good coach he is, though. He's, he realizes what his team can do, and he has them playing the one-on-one. -on -one. Offensive forward for Irving. Crowd thought Wicks was on him. Irving with a touchdown. 
but the doctor is still complaining. He and Wicks are going at it now. Sidney pulls away from it. So we're going to have to watch that, Billy. Inside the row, missed with the hook, and down comes Collins. On the fly, pressure, catching. A quick spurt. Beautiful fast break execution by the 76ers in this period. Something you expect to see more so from the Celtics. Bibby was all over Havlicek, and the Sixers are complaining if you watch that action again on the fast break. You know the beauty of that last break with Collins is he realized his Harvey catching is a poor outside shooter. So he's going to give them the ball when the last at the last moment when he has one thing to do, and that's to lay it in the basket. I don't care how many years you've officiated in the NBA. This would be some tough one to work. These two teams expected that at some time in the playoffs they would come together. And here it is in the semifinal. This is game one. Game two here Wednesday night. Can you imagine what it's going to be by game four and five? Don't miss this series. Inside move by Mix. Beautiful move by Mix. Curtis Pro played good defense, but the one thing the Celtics didn't do there was help him out. Hondo got Collins up in the air. Catchings batted it back in the doctors there. Doctor didn't see Collins brought it up all by himself and was fouled as Hondo came in behind him. That was a sandwich defense that they applied on Julius. Watch it again. Well, here's Julius. He'd like to go to the basket, but the penetration is stopped and John comes from the rear. So here is Julius, the only member of this talented team to erupt for 40 points in one game during the regular season. Well, one so far to go. So far today, excuse me, Brent, he's only he scored a very quiet 13 points. I wish I could score a quiet 13 <laughs> points when I played. Cowan stays in the backcourt. Now he'll put the ball on the floor and bring it up. Wicks cuts around him. Catching. And Scott inside off the lead. Irving. Skies for the rebound. On the wing to catching. Collins retrieves. Comes down the baseline. And the foul is against Collins. For Dave Collins, that's two fouls. That was a tough call. I, I thought Dave had position on that play. I'm a, maybe I'm at a bad angle here, but... Dave kind of smiled at the official like, are you kidding me? This will make it if it goes in, and it does not, but it could have made it a 13-point lead. Collins has had the hot hand, and he has been just flowing from one end of the floor to the other. Inside of a minute, Jimmy the Greek coming up at halftime. He'll talk about the Oklahoma football team, the San Francisco 49ers. Allen puts it down, and over on the other side was Curtis Rowe. That's Curtis's first two points of the day. And the 11-point lead as we come down the stretch in the first half. Collins bringing Irving over. Wicks watching the doctor. The doctor with a jump shot. Taken down by Scott. Taps it to Sidney Wicks. Wicks cuts on Bibby and slices to the hook. Oh, what a great play. That was... Great play by Sidney Wicks, getting that ball and having pressure the whole length of the court. Now here we'll see it again now. This is, he's dribbling that ball with his left hand, right hand, and taking it all the way to the hoop. That's a friend of his, old Henry Bibby from UCLA. Won a few championships out there together. And here is Sidney with his former team, Portland, getting ready a little bit later today. Game three of that series against Chicago. Many of you will be seeing that here on CBS. Also the Detroit Golden State game. That's a strange series. Detroit and Golden State. Golden State goes for almost seven minutes scoreless at the end of the first game and loses. Then come back and win by 30. Gene Shu called the clear out for Irving. Last five seconds of the half. It's a 10 point lead. Charlie Scott across the line hits it. Charlie Scott at the buzzer has given a little bit of a lift here to the Celtics. Watch it again. Never a doubt. Never a doubt. All net. Bam. The <laughs> midcourt shot by Charlie. So it's halftime. 
Red Arback is next and Jimmy the Greek all coming up on CBS. Mr. Bootkiss and I have a problem. I do not appreciate American football. And I don't appreciate rugby. However, there is one thing we both appreciate. Light beer from Miller. Light contains a third less calories than their regular beer. It's also less filling. But our favorite thing is the way it tastes. Quite right, Dickie boy. I'll never like your football, but I do love your light beer. Mike, I'll never like rugby, but I do love those cute little shorts. <laughs> light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. try and forget the 10th largest life insurance company in America, Lincoln National Life. We're easy to remember. This is Concours, a world-class luxury compact from Chevrolet in Europe to show that an American luxury compact can challenge the highways of the world. Concours is an affordable car built for drivers who want compact maneuverability and passenger comfort plus dependable Chevrolet engineering. Concours. Built for Americans at home anywhere. A world-class luxury compact from Chevrolet. David Thompson of the Denver Nuggets, guarded by Brian Winters of the Milwaukee Bucks. Now, David, in taking that shot, the man's hand was in your face. It didn't bother you. We're going to show the fans out there how similar it is to a simple little game. Now, I'm going to drop this bill, and I want you to catch it with your two fingers. Oh, he didn't catch it. You know why he didn't catch it? Because actually, it's impossible to catch it. You might do it luckily. You might guess, just like Brian Winters can guess and block a shot. He knows this. He knows that when he shoots, that ball is going to go up there before Brian can react. Take another one. Put your hand out there. Watch him watch his shoulders and his hand. All right, now take the ball. Take a dribble at him. Now let's see him react. All right, now when you took that shot, when you took that jump shot. Light beard from Miller. Light contains a third less calories than their regular beer. It's also less filling. But our favorite thing is the way it tastes. Quite right, Dickie boy. I'll never like your football, but I do love your light beer. Mike, I'll never like rugby, but I do love those cute little shorts. <laughs> light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. try and forget the 10th largest life insurance company in America, Lincoln National Life. We're easy to remember. This is Concours, a world-class luxury compact from Chevrolet in Europe to show that an American luxury compact can challenge the highways of the world. Concours is an affordable car built for drivers who want compact maneuverability and passenger comfort plus dependable Chevrolet engineering. Concours. Built for Americans at home anywhere. A world-class luxury compact from Chevrolet.
That's David Thompson of the Denver Nuggets, guarded by Brian Winters of the Milwaukee Bucks. Now, David, in taking that shot, the man's hand was in your face. It didn't bother you. We're going to show the fans out there how similar it is to a simple little game. Now, I'm going to drop this bill, and I want you to catch it with your two fingers. Whoop! He didn't catch it. You know why he didn't catch it? Because actually, it's impossible to catch it. You might do it. Luckily, you might guess, just like Brian Winters can guess and block a shot. He knows this. He knows that when he shoots, that ball is going to go up there before Brian can react. Take another one. Put your hand out here. Watch him. Watch his shoulders and his hand. All right, now take the ball. Take a dribble at him. Now let's see him react. All right, now when you took that shot, when you took that jump shot, how do you take the jump shot? Well, I made a move and a little body fake, met, uh, fake, and he reacted to my move by stepping back, and that left me open for the shot. Now, when you take that shot, you go straight up. You don't worry about going into the guy or, or jumping backwards that he might block your shot. You go straight up, facing the basket, because that's your most comfortable position. Is that right? Right, exactly. All right, now, if he does not react, you might fake him and go straight through from a guard position. Let's see that. Now, watch this. He's going to fake the stop and the shot. He's going to go. There you are. Now, what does that do? That keeps the guy honest, right? Right. Now, he can't, uh, he can't react. He doesn't know what you're going to do. All right, this time, take the dribble right at him, fake the shot, pump, and then take the shot. As many times as you want. Now, a good offensive man reacts from the moves of the defensive man. Now, this time, I want you to take the ball, go at him. I want you to jump in the air to block the shot on the jump shot. Now, make your move. Now watch what he does this time. Now, what did you do just like he said a moment ago? He waited for Brian Winters to react, go in the air. He was in no hurry. You, you were in no hurry, right? While he's coming down, then you go up. Right. I knew uh, that he couldn't uh, react to my jumping up before you know, I had a chance to make a really good shot. Now, for you young players out there, one thing you've got to know, don't be afraid for a guy to block your shot. For every one he blocks, if you do what David Thompson said and watch the defensive man, you score 10 baskets. So don't panic. And don't be afraid if a guy blocks your shot. Keep your poise, keep your fingers on that ball, get that backspin, and keep your body facing that basket, and those shots will go in. Rumors about Don Boozy of Indiana. Will he be traded? Jimmy the Greek will have that story coming up as the NBA on CBS will continue after this word from your local stations. Don't miss Danny Kaye, Sandy Duncan, and Flip Wilson in a special musical production of Pinocchio, tomorrow night on CBS.
take a close look at the fire in the Greeks' eyes on this Sunday afternoon playoff fever. Jimmy, when I arrived in Philadelphia, the rumor was Indiana would trade guard Don Boozy to the 76ers for center Daryl Dawkins and guard Lloyd Free. No, no, no way that it could happen, Brent. Now, there's no question about it that Boozy's a great player, but there's no way that Pat Williams would give up Dawkins. Absolutely no way in any way. What about the Golden State Warriors? They need a guard. Any possibility of them making a change? Well, they're definitely because that's where they've been getting killed this year, you know. And they're a little disappointed in their guard situation, and they want a good playmaker. And I think they'll probably try to get that birdsong kid from Houston University, but so will a few other a few other teams. Jimmy, you mentioned the draft. Milwaukee won the coin flip. Will they pick the Indiana center, Ken Benson? Definitely, providing, of course, that Benson back passes the doctor's examination. Uh, Jimmy, I had an awful lot of phone calls from your friends down in Oklahoma last week, the Sooner football fans, and they said, what's the Greek talking about? The NCAA investigation, they're up in arms down there. Well, they have to be up in arms, and I think Oklahoma's going to beat it because the thing that they are being criticized for by the NCAA is that there's been a little scalping going on by some of the kids with tickets. Now, they should beat that because so many of the other schools do it, too. But that's what they're on the hot seat for, let's face it. Now, let's make that clear. In other words, tickets that are given to the football players are being sold at scalpers' prices. Is that right? That's it. But so many of the schools do it, so consequently, Oklahoma will probably get away with it. Jimmy, you also mentioned Oklahoma State in that report last Sunday. All I can tell you, Brent, is that Oklahoma State was going to have the truck thrown at them. <laughs> All right. Listen, speaking of the truck, it ran over Monty Clark in San Francisco. He's out with Joe Thomas. Let me ask you this. Who will Joe Thomas now hire as the 49er coach? Well, there's so much press up there, and it's all negative towards Thomas and, you know, and the new ownership, which I don't think is quite fair because I love Monty Clark. I think he's a great coach, but I think he demanded too much, uh, you know, to stay. Uh, who will Joe pick? Well, you know, what would you do if you were Joe? I would pick a former assistant of mine who had been totally loyal to me. So we'll see who he does, you know. Now, what about Monty Clark's future? Where will he go? Well, there's two places, I think, providing, of course, that they show poorly. If San Diego or Cleveland, whichever one breaks, you know, poorly from the gate at the beginning of the season, that would be a good place for, for Monty Clark to go. But no matter where he goes, he will never get the authority that he's asking for. You know, Jimmy, later tonight on CBS is the uh, celebrity challenge of the sexes. Interesting tennis match. Bill Cosby against Farrah Fawcett Majors. Do you have any numbers on that match? Let me ask you one question. If you were playing Miss Fawcett, what would you do? I'd watch her very closely and carefully. And that means you would lose then, right? <laughs> so will Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> Beware of Greeks who talk about taped television shows. Have a nice week, and we'll see you next Sunday, Jimmy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> A pro basketball feast on CBS. Golden State, Detroit, Portland, Chicago later. Let's go to Don Cricky and Landover for a report on that game. We're here at Landover, Maryland, and at the half, the Washington Bullets are holding to a nine-point lead. They've led by as many as 17 points in the second quarter. So there is hope, I guess, for Cleveland, although their play was so bad in the first half, man, you have to wonder if they'd ever get back into it. I think they're extremely lucky to hold only a two, onto a nine-point deficit right now. Of course, they were fortunate in Elvin Hayes picking up his fourth foul, which caused the offensive play of the Washington Bullets to sort of change around a little bit. Dave Bean came into the game with a couple of bad shots. Elvin Hayes was not in there. The rebound, then his Gray got into a lot of foul trouble. Cleveland has attempted a lot of free throws, which has got them back into the ball game. And right now, we may have ourselves a contest. Well, it's been a very intense game, and of course, the personal foul problems that Elvin Hayes has. He spent much of the second quarter on the bench. He picked up four personal fouls. But you know, this game does decide who goes on vacation and who goes against Houston. So the last two quarters are going to be pretty mean. It's going to be tough because there's been a lot of contact out there all the way through the second quarter. Now let's go back to Boston, our to Philadelphia, and Brent Musburger. Washington. Here we go. And back in the spectrum. Thank you very much, Don and Mindy. 67-59, of course, is the count in this game. Some very interesting statistics in the first half. Charlie Scott scoring all 11 of his points in the second quarter. Sidney Wicks came off the bench for Tommy Heinsohn and pumped in 15. Doug Collins with 19 points. Back with the second half in a moment. 
This is the first Saturday your father hasn't played golf since 1927. Oh, Bob. <laughs> I seem to marry this girl every 50 years. Okay, you may now kiss, kiss the ride. The minute? The maker. It's Polaroid's new Minute Maker for beautiful color in just 60 seconds. And it's less than $25. Hey, we still look pretty good. The Minute? The Maker. It's new from Polaroid and it's less than $25. Both cars should run out of gas at the same time, but one driver used Mobile One oil instead of ordinary oil. Mobile One reduces friction so well it can take the average car up to 10 extra miles per tank full. And that's why they're here and they're there. Mobile One, the oil that saves you gas. When you cut your own firewood, a McCulloch chainsaw cuts cost good. McCulloch keeps America buzzing. McCulloch keeps you from going broke with all your money going up in smoke. McCulloch keeps America buzzing. Your McCulloch dealer ain't hard to find. Just let them know you made up your mind. So give your McCulloch dealer a buzz. He's in the yellow pages, cuz McCulloch keeps America buzzing. Nothing equal the thrill of playing in the NBA. But for you who never finish high school, there's another kind of thrill. Earn another pluma. I'm Alvin Hayes. Here in the city, youth learn self-respect and discipline while completing their education. Another example of United Way agencies working to give people a chance all year long. Thanks to you, it works for all of us, the United Way. The preceding public service message has been brought to you in cooperation with the National Basketball Association. The NBA on CBS is sponsored by Polaroid's new Minute Maker, the instant camera for instant color. Mobile One, a new synthesized engine lubricant, the oil that saves you gas. And by Allegheny Ludlam Industries, we make the special metals you live with every day. Spectrum, Billy, let's look at the stats. Well, there's nothing that really stands out. As you said, the rebounding. Seven more rebounds, that's quite a few. Uh, everything else is pretty even out there. Uh, of course, the one thing that's kept the Celtics in this game at this point is the foul shooting. They uh, have missed only one of 18. Right, now Domenico just came by here a few minutes ago, the trainer of the 76ers, and he was a little upset. He thought the Celtics went to the foul line a little too much. Let's take one more look at Charlie Scott at the buzzer as the first half comes to an end. I'm sure he practices that every day. Well, that's a shot you, you practice when you go to the University of North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Smith teaches all Tar Heels. And let's take a look at the team scoring. Oh, Doug Collins has been impressive here in the first half. The doctor was 16 quiet points, as Billy C. would say. He came on strong. Now the Celtics have a check. Game 166 of the playoffs of his career, and Wick strong off the bench. All right, Philadelphia goes to work. Aaron White with the ball. McGinnis is back. Remember, he's with three fouls. Wicks is on him. George takes the first shot, a little short, and Wicks retrieves. Now it is Pavlicek at the other end, getting free up in the air. McGinnis came back. Scott wanted the foul. That was his yell you heard. Wicks cuts off the doctor who came down with the ball and had to get rid of it. On the move comes Charlie. Wicks not there. Scott retrieves. Air ball. Caldwell Jones off to Collin. Racehorse sloppy basketball as we start the second half. Back to the doctor. Racehorse is right. There's going to be a lot of pressure on JoJo White because he's starting out playing against Doug Collins. And they'll try and post Doug and get him the ball and try and throw that fifth foul on JoJo. So three instead of Bibby as White gets inside. White. A penetrating move. Smooth, underhanded basket. Now it is an 8.76er lead, and I see just a little more movement out here with the Celtics as we start the second half. They're coming to the basket here in their usual fashion, at least so far. We can see the rest of the 76ers standing around watching Collins. It's great when it goes in, but if he's not making those, they can be in trouble. Back to that 10-point margin again. 
Havlicek came down. That right goes to McGinnis. No doubt about who controlled at that end, was there? That I wasn't out there. Three, one on one. Gave it up on the move to the hoop. Now the Celts will set a play. Cowens is at the free throw line. Picks off three and White goes under. McGinnis switches out on White. Scott comes inside. He's got it. He'll come to the line. Fine move by Charlie Scott. The one thing that stood out of my mind this one series down the court is the 76ers are not applying the pressure they were applying in the first half defensively. Here we see Charlie penetrating, going to his left, hanging in the air. Great body control there. And a chance for the three-point play. Next on CBS, Portland, Chicago, Golden State, Detroit. Portland and Golden State, the home team. Now the 76ers set a play. Here's that one-on-one -on -one style. Collins took it from Julius. Collins underneath with control. Quick pass, he wants Wicks. Off Sydney's hands. He tried to pass it back in to JoJo. The 76ers were there on defense. Three trying to retrieve, lost control. Well, it's been sloppy up to this point in the second half here, but I'm sure they'll get things together after this timeout and come out and be playing fine basketball. Bibby checks in and three goes out. Sometimes the Celtics will turn in a tremendous spurt when a game turns sloppy like this, Billy C. Well, haven't I experienced that many times? Another check looking in goes Collins. Caldwell Jones hand checks underneath and here's Wicks. And great defensive play by the doctor. They brought him alive in the spectra. And then Charlie Scott stepped in with one of his own. McGinnis back now to Collins. Came in, offense is the call. Here we'll see Dr. J making what you would call a game-winning play. Sidney Wicks wide open, coming from nowhere to get a piece of the ball. Three fouls on Doug Collins. The 76ers right now have four players with three fouls on them. Three, Collins, McGinnis, and Caldwell Jones. There was a technical foul. Take a look at the official has been on this called. Oh. We've got a timeout. Law and order restored. We'll come back to show you that sequence. But we've had a technical call, and JoJo White will be coming to the bench. Doug Collins protesting over his third personal. Beautiful play, wasn't it? The Monzas, a little road magic from Chevrolet. Monza by Chevrolet. You have a choice. Chevy Monza Coupe or 2 plus 2 hatchback. Two different looks, one simple fact. Monzas are for people who think driving is still America's greatest outdoor sport. Monza by Chevrolet. Get a little road magic. Monza by Chevrolet. At Allegheny Ludlam Industries, we're in a very special business because we make and use special metals in a lot of different ways nobody else does. Like that Jacobson mower back there. It's made by one of our companies. And we make an electronic component for digital watches, too. We create a lot of different things you live with every day. All the way from this true temper golf shaft to the stainless steel skin for this. How do you spell relief? When I get acid indigestion, I spell relief R-O-L-A-I-D-S. For heartburn? R-O-L-A-I-D-S. Rolaid spells relief. In this test with Rolaid's active ingredient, laboratory acid changes color to prove Rolaid's consumes 47 times its weight in excess stomach acid. How do you spell relief? For gas, I spell it R-O-L-A-I-D-S. Rolaid spells relief. Paul Taylor, dead for two minutes. Now the dead compel him to return to protect the living from the unexpected, the strange, the terrifying. For the first time on television, the world of the dead, the world of darkness. Sunday at 10, 9 Central. Joe White will shoot the technical. It was charged to Doug Collins. 
as he picked up his third foul. That is the second technical in this game. The first one called against Tommy Heinsohn. The second one there to Doug, who was checking the score and what he saw. 71-65. Sixers, 9-0-9. Third quarter from the Spectrum. Now the Celts will set a play. It has been a very tough Philadelphia defense so far. The Celts have had to work for their points. Scott pushes one up. Wick there at the glass. And loose ball foul. Sidney Wicks is charged with that personal. His second. On that play, I hate to be critical of the official, but it looked like Sidney fouled John Havlicek going to the offensive board. Caldwell off to Big George, working on Wicks. Scott is at the other side of the glass. Back now on Bibby. Collins cut in, and Hondo made a mistake and threw it out of bounds. And that's bound to happen when you're 37 years old. I guess you're entitled to one mistake in your life. Well, you don't see him make many. <laughs> Well, the 76ers have to get something going here because they can hear the footsteps of the Celtics. The Celtics still are not, haven't gotten that spurt that you were talking about. If they get it. So the doctor started operating on Havlicek, hit the field goal, and he'll come to the free throw line. Here's the isolation, the doctor and John Havlicek. Heinz on up arguing. Well, Heinz didn't argue about anything, though. <laughs> 63-65, make it 74-65. Tommy sitting back down now, chomping away on that gum. Left side to Scott. Comes in the middle and Collins will shoot outside. I just love to watch the Celtics execute plays. It's just beauty, just beauty. And they've been running the same place for 12 years, and everyone knows their plays, but they execute it so well, and their timing is there. It's just beauty to watch. Irving. That's 23 points for Julius. Scott yells a play for the Celts. Collins will take him. Here's Wicks bringing McGinnis with him. Inside to JoJo. Another one of their pretty plays. They watch a pin down on the other side, bring the guard on through. I'm sure JoJo enjoyed that after being posted so long by Doug Collins down low. He had the chance to post Henry Bibby down low. In his eyes, the hoop, and they swing left, and here's the doctor. Collins. There's the score from Landover. The Bullets in command and hoping to advance on and play Houston. Bibby on white. Second with him, and Jojo made a move and came around. It was a foul from Bibby, who didn't like the call at all. McGinnis also protesting. That's three fouls on Bibby. From the side, Charlie Scott will put it in play. 7.06 left in the third quarter. It's a nine-point Philadelphia lead. 76ers won 50 games during the regular season. Scott. Another foul is called. It's on the doctor. That was fine defense by the 76 as a unit up until that point, but then Charlie made a good fake and forced Julius to commit himself and throw that foul. Three fouls on the doctor. Three team fouls against Philadelphia. Time out in the spectrum. 6.51 left in the third. Talk to nine people about where to find a good radio tire, and you'll probably get nine different answers. Well, here's one place you can count on. Sears. And this is Sears Guardsman Radio, priced from $29.88 for subcompacts to $49 for full-size cars. Guardsman. From compacts to Cadillac, Sears' lowest-priced radio. And you know they're good. They're backed by Sears. Sears, for straight talk, good values, and satisfaction. I always rely on my Lufkin measuring tape for really important projects. Because Lufkin has a patented bumper that helps to keep the tip from breaking off. And a positive lock that helps to keep the blade from slipping until you want it to. Lufkin is a good name to have around when you're measuring something really important. 
Right now, when you buy one of these Lufkin tapes, you get these Crescent pliers free. Lufkin, one of the fine family of tools from Cooper Industries. This is a cubic foot. There are five more of these inside the new Chevrolet than there are inside this year's older style full-size cars of Chevy's nearest sales competitor. That's based on U.S. government estimates of vehicle interior size as reported in the 1977 EPA Guide for New Car Buyers. The new Chevrolet with five more cubic feet of room. It stacks up beautifully. Now that's more like it. Next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports Spectacular presents live the World Full Contact Karate Championships with Superfoot Bill Wallace defending his title and the Super Bowl of Motocross, the biggest motocross event in the world. And we'll have the Human Fly attempting to stand atop a jetliner while in flight. And the finals of the CBS Virginia Beach Classic. That's next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's Barry Frank's human fly. <laughs> Excuse me for the inside joke, but Barry Frank is our general manager and vice president who has signed up the human fly. Billy, we're holding him directly responsible for that routine next Saturday. Are you going to interview the... This yes. human fly on top of the plane? Oh, no, no, oh, at the no. side. Oh, as we the go side. Yeah. Does or it. hanging by the wing. <laughs> All right. The Celtics had run off 17 straight free throws. John Killalay charting the game for Tommy Heinsohn. So now it is 19 for the men in green who are staying tight at the free throw line. Inside to the doctor and Cowens jumped over. Great defensive switch in the block. Collins cleaned up and Wicks comes down. Seven point lead right now and slowly back come the Celtics. Across the Hondo at that baseline as they set another of those plays on the Scott will shoot the bottom. Wicks came in and hit it last out of bounds. All they need is one or two of those who they missed like that when Charlie missed. And they're right back in this game. This is this is going to be a barn burner. Nikmata in charge by 10 points. Houston awaits the winner. The 76ers throw the lob to McGinnis. Taken down by Jojo. Now it's crashes to the basket. <laughs> He'll come to the line. The Celtics can make it 20 straight free throws and a three-point play by Big Red. Here we'll see Cowens driving to the hoop, getting fouled and making the hoop. And welcome, those of you who've been watching Washington Cleveland. We've got five minutes and 54 seconds to go in the third. That is 20 straight free throws for the Boston Celtics in this game. I believe we've got a 20-second injury timeout as McGinnis is coming over. Yes, he's over to the bench, Al Domenico, the trainer, alongside Gene Chu. But let's recap some of the action for you. The Celtics have been a little quicker. A few more breaks here in the third quarter, Billy. Uh, they're, they're picking up defensively. They're playing, as we saw a few, few minutes ago, where they double-team, triple-team, Julia serving down low, and were able to get their fast break going. Richie Jackson now talking to Gene Chu. Jackson and Crawford three in this game here. What McGinnis is injured? Chu said he had to be fouled with an injury like that. There was no foul called. That's why there's an argument. 5.54 to go in the third. 76 to lead by four. Right now the argument takes on a little bit different vein because I said that's going to be a full time out. They did more than 20 seconds. What's his injury? What, what well, I think George's injury is his injury. fourth foul. <laughs> now that was trainer Frankie Chalant telling the PA announcer that it has to be announced to the crowd what George McGinnis's injury is that it's a league rule. Well, the 76ers got a breather. McGinnis has gone out. Mix has checked in. Turnaround by Steve and Cowan. Tower of strength when he turns it on. Celtics can make this a two-point basketball game. Behind by 13. And the defending champions have rolled back into it. 
White cuts around on the spin. It goes in and he'll come to the line. Great Hold move on. by JoJo. It will see JoJo coming over the top of the pick in for this shot. Well, he was not fouled as he came in. They gave him the hoop. And the doctor answers at the other end. The doctor makes a fine move here. He realizing that he came from all the way to the hoop, holds up for that short shot and gets pushed by on the hip by Pavlicek. Billy, I've cleared up this whistle at the other end. He wasn't fouled as he turned the corner. They had called goaltending down there, so it was good anyway. And that's why the whistle was down there, which had confused me for just a moment. So it's 81-76. Five-point Philadelphia lead right now. 26 points for the doctor. Here is White moving inside. He has been getting inside throughout the third quarter. Now Irving back. And we want to keep you informed on Washington Cleveland. So let's go down to Don Crickey and check in. All right, those of you who've been watching Boston and Philadelphia, we welcome you to Landover, Maryland. The Bullets in the white uniforms continue to lead the game. They're up now 76 to 66. We have four minutes and three seconds to play in the third quarter. Cleveland has been unable to get the backcourt production in points. Their guards have not shot well. Broke pause in the game for Austin Carr, who's hit only two of nine. Here is Campy Russell down the rebound now for Cleveland up court to Snyder. Throws it away. Phil Chenier coming up with a loose ball for Washington. Very intense crowd, very intense basketball game. As Elvin Hayes guns one up. Long pass down court to Brewer. He walked with the ball. That illustrates what's been happening to Cleveland at 76-66. Washington in the lead and has the ball back. All right, we're back in the spectrum, and it is really heating up right now. Cowan's hit a field goal. Mix and Havlicek, Billy, apparently were shoving at each other. And then Cowan's jumped in the middle, and he said, don't touch Havlicek, he's too old. Go after me. Tommy Heinz it up. So 81-78. Celtics have a big advantage right now, in my opinion. They, these players have been through this type of situation for years and years. Havlicek winning eight championships. And they've been here before. If the Wicks can knock these two free throws in, it's a one-point ball game, and they have the composure, the poise, and they're going to put a lot of pressure on the 76 from here on in. And also, Billy, a lot of pressure on these two young referees. Oh. I wonder... If the 76ers did do lose today, what type of reaction this would have over the rest of the playoffs on that? Would they be able to bounce back? I wonder. 22 straight free throws by the Boston Celtics since last they missed with 4.05 and a one-point game here in the spectrum. Mix backs in on Hondo. Now it's a three-point 76er lead like night and day watching the Celtics execute their offense in the 76ers. White is left alone, left corner. Wicks was there. White. This is the Celtics that I'm familiar with playing basketball out there now. White is credited with the field goal. Joe Crawford has got the foul against Havlicek and that is five. There we'll see Sidney Witts following in and finds him. Curtis Rowe checks in. Havlicek goes to the bench with five personal fouls. 334. Inside the bivy, Scott was there. The foul is called on Charlie Scott. Now Charlie was, was there a little late, I thought. I thought that he got there just when Bibby was there to go in for the shot. JoJo White just did a very intelligent thing. Scott had been kicked out down in San Antonio, and JoJo just grabbed him when he started to protest again and said, calm down, we need you. They're going to need everybody down the stretch in this game. Havlicek with five fouls, White with four. The 76 is playing so well here in game one of this Eastern Conference semifinal. Charlie's going to have to realize that, that the team is in foul trouble and if they do lose it, he's really hurting them. Lloyd Free will be checking back in. 
Oh, well, Jones is out on Wicks. Mix running Collins. JoJo White was underneath. Second chance for the Celts. Collins from the corner. Short. Now the 76ers come off. They're up by three points right now. Here is Bibby, and Collins flew out at him. Couldn't do it. Heights has called a timeout. Suddenly it is five points. And I want to tell you, you would think that this was the seventh game of the playoffs or the championship at stake. That's the kind of intensity we're seeing in Philadelphia today. For years, this little dog has stood as the symbol for sound clarity. Sound so clear he could recognize his master's voice coming through a speaker. Today, RCA offers you a CB radio with that same uncompromising dedication to sound clarity. The new RCA 40 channel co-pilot with a kind of advanced electronic engineering you should have for clear CB transmission and reception. How clear? Breaker, breaker, you go sit. That clear. Brakes need work? You need somebody who really cares about fixing your mic. I care. I'm Mr. Goodrench. I serve as General Motors cars at GM dealerships. I have the training and the genuine GM parts designed specifically to help you keep that great GM feeling. Keep that great GM feeling. Ask for me, Mr. Goodrench, wherever you find this sign. With genuine GM parts. Spring. It only comes once a year. If you want a nice, thick lawn, now's the time to do something about it. Give your lawn some Scott's Turf Builder right now. Turf Builder helps grass send off new branches, either tillers or rhizomes. This forms new grass plants that'll thicken up your lawn and fill in those thin spots. But don't wait. Before you know it, spring will be gone. This Friday at 11.30 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports will present NBA Playoff Action, followed on Sunday at 1.30 p.m. by a playoff doubleheader. That's NBA Playoff Action Friday night at 11.30 and a doubleheader on Sunday, tipping off at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. He would not sell you that Coke for $5. He wants to stay out here and watch the action. He doesn't want to have to go in and fill up. Can't play 87, 82, and 2.45 to go. Jones left alone underneath after the miss by Scott. Keep an eye on Cowens, folks. He is a man possessed here this afternoon. Watch the pick here. Watch the pick here, he just yelled. Switch in, back. Jones came up and couldn't dunk it. Oh. Length of the floor to Rose. Not, not out of bounds, and here's the doctor on the save. Left-handed pass mix. Collins jumps out and it's missing. Jones for three. Six of the out here or what? Oh. Wicks on oh. Irving and Julius has come to the line. The doctor is going into the stairs. Sydney Wicks, George McGinnis leading cheers, and Charlie Scott saying, I can't believe these fouls that are being called against us. It's now an eight point margin, 90 to 82. Look at that afternoon that the doctor is having. It's playoff time. Listen to the crowd. Scott. And more of the same after this, with Golden State hosting Detroit and Portland doing likewise against Chicago. All coming up on CBS. 1.35 to go third quarter. Next cuts around the left of the Fine shot by Vix. He thought he got fouled on that play. Oh, Allen's outside. Hey, Allen's back on defense. 
no one thing the Celtics would do. would never crack under pressure. Irving throws up a miss. Loose ball foul. And it's against Curtis Rowe of the Celtics. That was a late whistle there. Julius was lying on the floor before they blew the whistle. Into the penalty go the Celtics. Tommy Boswell checks in. Heinsohn's furious. Heinsohn's up yelling again at Jackson. Killalay's up. Hamlet checks up. And the veteran referees continue to march outside with their picket signs. And the pressure mounts on these youngsters. Harvey Catchings will check in. And here he comes. Lloyd three also in. Jones and Bibby go out. Bibby has played a whale of game. Kind of unselfish player you've got to have with all of these talented scores. That's one reason Caldwell Jones has not scored as many points as people expected this year for the 76ers. Very unselfish player, but an outstanding offensive player. Go oh, inside of the one minute mark in the third quarter. 94 86. Turnover, Collins interception. 76ers can go up by 10. They're trying to clear it for, for Julius now. That's a shot clock on the right. Collins retrieves. They have turned it over. Last shot time. Give it to Charlie Scott. Three with pressure. Collins comes back. Catchings with him. Now Scott brings it across. They can go into the fourth quarter. Down by six if they can convert here. Try to get it down to five so the 76ers can't. No, they did not. Rowe threw up a miss, but I don't know. I don't think they got enough time. They did not. The end of three in the spectrum. Game one, the Eastern Conference semifinal. The crowd says it all. It's been that kind of a day. Changing to Cam 2 motor oils like falling in love. I'm running and I'm racing to make it the best Cam 2. Stop cars, mini cars, and all the rest Cam 2. Change your road to Cam 2 alone. It's tough, you'll love it. Cam 2. Hey, if Roger Penske is willing to risk a $100,000 car and a million dollar race on Cam 2, I'm with him. Cam 2. You know it's tough, and you love it. The NBA on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. Can Farrah Fawcett Majors beat Bill Cosby in tennis? Just one of the events on Celebrity Challenge of the Sexes, tonight at 8, 7 Central on CBS. Artis Gilmore and Bill Walton. You'll find out right after this fourth quarter on CBS. And Julius Irving tossed in 13 points in the third quarter. Scott leading the South. Oh, great, great. First shot, fourth quarter miss. 94-86. Steve Mix was showing Billy Cunningham his jersey. It is ripped 
in front off a of freeze hand, tried to save it, stepped out of bounds. On the turnover, it'll go to Boston. Celtics have to get some movement in their offense, and they're also going to have to play a little tougher defense right now because the 76ers have that eight point lead. Jump! Get up! Three Collins looking around. Wanted Scott Free, had a hand on it. Double teamed in Bibby, but out of bounds, so the Celtics will set a play. Here we'll see Charlie Scott faking, faking, and here's Henry Bibby with his good hand. And then he stepped on the line. 47 to 29, that's the rebounding edge that the 76ers have enjoyed here in the spectrum. JoJo White. Boswell was backing in and there was a loose ball foul call. It's against Boswell. Well, welcome, those of you who've been watching Cleveland, Washington. Here, 11 06 left in the game, 94 86. Philadelphia with the lead. Julius had 13 in the third, came up on Boswell, misfired. Sidney Wicks getting ready to check back in for the Celtics. Right now, the Celtics are in trouble. From one standpoint, with Boswell, when Boswell is going out now, Sidney Wicks is coming in, but with, Bo with Boswell guarding the doctor, the doctor is just too quick for him to play against. Excuse me, he is staying against Boswell. Well, they may switch, though, here, Billy, because they took Bro out. So now he can certainly put Wicks over on the doctor and leave Boswell with Mix. So let's see if they do that. And again, Irving, for those of you who are watching, Washington Cleveland scored 13 in the third quarter. He's up at the 30-point level now with 11 minutes left in the game, 95-86. Oh. Scott carrying the scoring load. Turnover. Boswell's having a very rough time of it. He's frustrated. Yeah, I, the, the Celtics miss Havlicek right now because he gets them moving offensively. They, you're not able to stand around. Right now, they're standing around and watching each other. They're playing more like the 76ers style of play. 40 left here in the fourth quarter with that offensive foul called against the 76ers. It's 95 86 Billy Leeds. Steve Mix picking up his first foul of the game. A loose ball. Washington is doing against Cleveland. Trying to advance on into the other Eastern Conference semifinal against Houston. White double team gave it up to Charlie. That's the move that the Celtics need. Fine play by JoJo being able to find Charlie Scott at the foul line for the jump shot. Seven point lead. Good move by Free and Collins came over in the double team. Free was fouled as he came through the hoop. Collins fouled him. That's Dave's third. Boy, Free is so deceptive because he just, he's always maybe 6'2", but he jumps so well. There he is. He's right up there with Collins and everyone else. John Havlicek checks back in, and so does George McGinnis. Julius Irving goes out right now. 30 points so far for the doctor. He won't be sitting over there very long. They'll just get him a little breather and say, okay, let's get back here and there and try and wrap up this first game for the, for the 76ers. Three misses. It's an eight-point lead. As the Celts come down, let's go to Don Crickey for an update in Washington. Those of you watching Philadelphia and Boston, it's heating up here at Landover, Maryland. Only nine minutes and 11 seconds remain in the season for one of these teams, quite possibly the Cleveland Cavaliers, as they trail by 11 as Elvin Hayes has to be separated. He's being restrained by Earl Strom now because on this particular play, Paul Campbell, the rookie official, called the fifth foul on Elvin Hayes and there you saw it on the replay as Dick Snyder will go to the free throw line for two shots. A very, very crucial foul because the Washington Bullets can ill afford to lose a scoring man like Elvin Hayes. He does so much for this club. 
Snyder at the free throw line. Cleveland just had horrendous shooting percentages. You see, they can't even hit the free throw. They're just perplexed. Nothing will drop. 9.05 to go in 90-79. Washington in the lead. Now Elvin Hayes and Elmore Smith are openly shoving each other. Fighting for position. No basket. No basket. A foul prior to the shot on Elmore Smith. We have 8.59 to play in the game. It's 90-79 to Washington. Back in the spectrum. I'm Brent Musburger with Billy Cunningham. 76ers still with that lead and a miss by Bibby and the action has been fierce under both boards. Out of bounds. It'll go to the 76ers. That's a pass that Towns has not converted all day and they've thrown the ball away four or five times. I'll tell you, this game is best depicted in the front of Steve Mix's jersey. And I hope our director, Sandy Grossman, and one of our cameramen can pick it up. Wicks is on him right now. Here is Ketchings. Into McGinnis. Coming up on Havlicek. Taken down now by Wicks. That jersey is ripped right in front. That's how fierce it has been here in the spectrum. Inside the Sydney's alone with the dunk. Havlicek's going to have a great deal of pressure on him defensively because he's going to be matched up against McGinnis. McGinnis is going to try and take him low and get that six foul on, on John. 76 ers still have not picked up a team foul in the fourth. That could be a factor late. Jimmy retains control. He's done a great job for Shue. Wicks there at the other end. Here they come. Have check up line. The full court pressure off now to White. Jump shot. And Lloyd Free puts it on the floor. And there's Hondo and White. Off to Bibby. And he travels. That was a bad pass by Lloyd Free, trying to make that bounce pass off the dribble. If he just took his time, picked the ball up with two hands, and made, executed the play properly, he lose two points. There's the doctor and Doug Collins, both back in. Time left, 8-11. So Gene Shue's bench may be a little deeper as this series gets underway. But just with the presence of Havlicek on the court, we've seen the movement of the Celtics improve so drastically. Irving on Hondo. Harvey catching out on Collins. One and Wicks. Joe Crawford with the foul. It is against Bibby. Okay, we'll, we'll take a look at this again here. With the mismatch, Collins realizing that there that, that was Bibby on Wicks and committing the foul. An important fact, though, could be that the Celtics have 14 fouls. If one more foul, there is a penalty, whereas the, the 76ers have only one team foul. That could be very important as we go down the stretch here. Bibby protesting after picking up his fifth foul. He'll get a rest. Collins and three in the backcourt for Shue. Boyd moving on three. Short taken down McGinnis. Well, the Celtics haven't been able to convert the last couple times down the court. They could just pull in and make this game a tie game very easily. 7.35 for the game. The doctor. Yanked down by Collins between two white jerseys. Scott quickly to Wicks. Crowd wanted traveling. Collins making a move. Now it's a four-point basketball game in 7.15. It seems to be that Cowards just shifts into gear. <laughs> now he's just playing, it seems, so much more intensely on the defensive boards and on the fast break getting down here. Here we'll see Cowards going to the hoop, causing Ketchings to commit himself, and going up to the easy two points. Time out, respective 7-10 left. With great skill and discipline, you teach what's been kept a secret for centuries. And when the lesson has been taught and learned, now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. America's quality beer, Miller High Life. If you got the time, the time. Well, we've got the beer, Miller. Hello, National. I need a car tomorrow in Dallas. My green light number is 28517. I make your reservation. This minute's all it takes. I watch the car. I check the oil. I test the tires and brakes. I make sure that they are all completely up to par. I hand you the keys to a General Motors car. 10,000 people working for you. CBS 
CBS Sports presents Farrah Fawcett Majors taking the court against Bill Cosby. Ed Asner is coach Bob Reiner at the marathon race. And Penny Marshall versus Robert Conrad on the obstacle course. Just a few of the stars on the high-spirited special Celebrity Challenge of the Sexes, Sunday at 8, 7 Central Time. The Philadelphia 76ers looking for their first field goal in the first quarter, in the fourth quarter as you look at the personal foul. Have the check and maybe in danger. I think the key point is that Dave Cowens can turn it loose here for the final 7-10. He is playing with just three fouls. Havlicek is the one who has to be careful. That's right. But John Havlicek has played 166 playoff games, and I think he knows how to play this game fairly well. Now, the 76ers need a field goal to keep going. Look at that spectator over there saying he can't hand check the doctor that way. Blow that whistle. Three. Which switches out on Collins, and they still come away without hitting the field goal. Only two foul shots this half, this quarter, excuse me. Collins keeping it in play, but it wouldn't go in. The Celtics will have possession. The game is getting more physical. The Celtics are really taking it to the 76ers at the defensive end. They're using their hands and their body, and this is something that the 76ers have to get used to. This is the way you play in the playoffs. The 76ers are 38 seconds shy of going half of the fourth quarter here in game one without a field goal. Scott off the mark. Collins went. There was a loose ball foul. And we're in the penalty. So number four against Collins. Six minutes and 30 seconds. This kind of reminds me of the Golden State game against Detroit where they went 6.49 in the fourth period to lose to Detroit in their first game out there. There's a fan who's been doing a lot of officiating here in the spectrum. Jackson and Crawford and a lot of help here at Philly. Meanwhile, Coach Shue, he's just sitting back and enjoying it. He's still got a four-point lead, but he'll get nervous here shortly if they don't hit a field goal. This is why defense is so important in the playoffs, man. You're not going to have to be able to function offensively the way you might like to and you've been able to do during the regular season. Bounce right back to Lloyd's three. Get on the miss. And then there's the doctor and Collins took it away. White on the left side, off to Havlicek. Collins fouled him, it'll count. I don't think Doug even should have given him the opportunity to blow the whistle, whether he fouled him or not, because the official didn't get a good look. It looked like Collins was draped all over it. It sure did. It sure did. It was a good call by the official, and Doug should have just laid off because he, did, he wasn't in good position. Ando can pull the Celtics to within two points. Three free throws this quarter for Philadelphia. That was Hondo's first field goal in the second half. Now 6.05 to go for the game. Collins and White sends him to the free throw line. And JoJo White has picked up his fifth. He played a long way with four. This is something Collins does better than anyone in basketball at the guard position. Move without the ball. He set JoJo White up where... Jojo was leaning, expecting him to go out and take the jump shot. He just had him leaning oh, just slightly, and there he went, ducked back in for, to get fouled and have a chance to score two points. Now the penalty for Collins. 3.76ers lead. Up to four with six minutes left. Oh, oh, oh. Do you realize McGinnis has not scored a point in the second half? He hasn't shot the ball very often either. And this is one of the problems you have when you play. And then the bounce back. Three. Owens is there. The Celtics can tie it. Havlicek does. And still the 76ers looking for a field goal. 5.20 to go here in the fourth quarter. For you young people, that's the way you execute a fast break. 
he is. Pull up at the foul line, shoot the ball, or pass it to someone for the shot. Bimby will come back, Irving short. They can't put anything in here in the spectrum. Here's Havlicek. Boston can go into the lead. Cowan misfires. And over the hoop. Irving outlet now to free. Who's going to get the first field goal? Free says, I'll do it. That's where he's most effective in the open field. Four, but boy, you have to 35. give so much credit to this Celtic team, boy. Traveling all day yesterday from San Antonio. But they're ready to play. Boy. That was Hondo's first field goal in the second half. Now 6.05 to go for the game. Collins and White sends him to the free throw line. And JoJo White has picked up his fifth. He played a long way with four. This is something Collins does better than anyone in basketball at the guard position. Move without the ball. He set JoJo White up where JoJo was leaning, expecting him to go out and take the jump shot. He just had him leaning just slightly, and there he went up back in for, to get fouled and have a chance to score two points. Now the penalty for Collins. 3.76ers lead. Up to four with six minutes left. McGinnis has not scored a point in the second half. He hasn't shot the ball very often either. This is one of the problems you have when you play. And Avalier's bounce back. Three. Howens is there. The Celtics can tie it. Havlicek does, and still the 76ers looking for a field goal. 5.20 to go here in the fourth quarter. For you young people, that's the way you execute a fast break. Man. Pull up at the foul line, shoot the ball, or pass it to someone for the shot. Bibby will come back. Irving short. They can't put anything in here in the spectrum. Here's Havlicek. Boston can go into the lead. Cowan misfires. And over the hoop. Irving outlet now to Free. Who's going to get the first field goal? Free says, I'll do it. That's where he's most effective in the open field. But boy, Four, you have to 35. give so much credit to this Celtic team, boy. Traveling all day yesterday from San Antonio, and, but they're ready to play. White ties it at 101 and 425 to go. And Bill Walton starting to warm up in Portland. That'll be coming up next on CBS. Likewise from Golden State, Rick Barry. McGinnis, one hands it. Now it was called underneath. It was against Sidney Wicks. It was battling for rebounding position. The foul shots are really coming back to haunt the Celtics now. Doctor comes up at the line with 30 points for the afternoon. I was involved my first year in professional basketball in a situation similar to the 76ers. We were laid off for 10 days waiting for the Celtics to come play us. We had won the regular season championship, sitting back there just waiting to beat the Celtics. They came into town, beat us four out of five. Down by two, the Celtics go up on Havlicek's shot and tie. 
Now when it, four minutes. When it's money time, he likes that ball in his hands. Now let's see who wants it on these two powerful teams down the stretch. Look at that pressure defense. Cowan switches on McGinnis, who slid inside him. Irving stepped on the out-of-bounds line, goes to Boston. They can go ahead at 3.39. Dean Shield definitely will have gray hairs after this game. Knicks went down. There will be a timeout in the spectrum. Tommy Heinsohn and John Killalay with the Celtics. The 76ers have suddenly gone cold in the spectrum. Harry, this Chevelle costs less than our little compact. $38.85? And this is a mid-size Chevrolet. See? <laughs> huh? My compact costs more. Hey, look at this. Hey, that's some price for a neat-looking mid-size. Gee, I paid more for my compact. So did I. Me too. Surprise, America, the smart, complete mid-size Chevelle. It's priced lower than 34 compacts. $38.85, Harry. $38.85. Home light saw bug days are here. Buy any one of these rugged home light chainsaws right now and get this 15 buck woodcutter's kit absolutely free. This woodcutter's kit has everything you need to take care of your home light. Bar and chain oil, engine oil, gauge, file, grease gun, and lots more. You're in control with home light and the home light woodcutter's kit. It's free during home light saw bug days. Check yellow pages for your home light dealer. Hi, I'm Tom Watson. You know, the right grip is the basic fundamental for a good golf game. And a firm grip in the road is basic to your driving safety. That's why I use Armstrong tires. They grip the road. And now, your local Armstrong dealer can offer you a great deal on this high-performance steel-belted radio. See him today and see for yourself. Armstrong tires. They grip the road. Paul Taylor, dead for two minutes. Now the dead compel him to return to protect the living from the unexpected, the strange, the terrifying. For the first time on television, the world of the dead, the world of darkness. Sunday at 10, 9 Central. Those wrinkles were not in her forehead back in the second quarter when her Philadelphia 76ers opened up a 13-point lead. But it's fret and worry time in the spectrum. 338, George McGinnis, 3 of 11 for the game, tied at 103. Boston was ahead 2-0. Since then, it has been the 76ers. Cowens out high. Look at this contact. Cowens looking in. Scott cuts to the left, slides in. There's a foul as Charlie Scott came to the basket and Mix draws the foul. Here we'll see Charlie penetrating and he'll just, it's a good play by Sidney Wicks. Setting that pick for Charlie to get in there and he was able to draw the foul. So Sidney Wicks, who has lived much of his career under a cloud of controversy because they said you couldn't win with Sidney Wicks in the lineup. And now how badly he wants to prove otherwise. Well, they said very similar things last year about Charlie Scott. Look what he did for the Celtics last year. Boston ahead by those two and 3-12 left in the game and Collins for the tie. A magnificent performance by Doug Collins. Right now it's quite different. The 76ers will be going to either... Irving or Collins, the Celtics don't go to anyone on the floor. 255 and Collins. 107-105. Down toward two minutes and 40 seconds. Mix looking for an open man to Bippy. And the doctor with a big rebound and a misfire. There's Collins there to clear. That big redhead, he goes up there off the boards. He's only 6'8". Oh, well, Jones is 7 feet tall. Wicks is alone. It's four. He missed it. Tapped it back in. Oh. Those Celtics. That fan said it all. 
Here we'll see Sidney West just walking right down the middle of the lane for the two, two points. He'll get it. Give him one more shot. Billy, what happened to the defense that Philadelphia had in the first half? Well, we pointed that out, Brent. We said that we were concerned that Philadelphia had played this style of defense all year. All of a sudden, they're coming out, overplaying, pressuring the Celtics, and doing an outstanding job. Would they be able to maintain this? Would they run into fatigue problems? And I think this has happened. Billy, let's go to Don Crickey in Washington. Well, we've got just as much excitement here at Landover, Maryland, as they do at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. For those of you who are watching the 76ers and the Celtics, Cleveland has rallied back from a 17-point deficit. Cavaliers tied this game at 94. Now Watson has a four-point lead with 118 left to play. And Kevin Grevy, a second-year player out of the University of Kentucky, a sharpshooter, will go to the free-throw line for Washington. Grevy has scored 13 points. The free-throws will play a very important part in the last minute and 18. Cleveland is in the penalty situation. Washington has one foul to give yet without the penalty. 99-94, Greasy can give the Bullets a six-point lead, and he does not. Rebound tipped over to Elmore Smith, and so Cleveland comes back down the floor as time is so very much a factor now. 1-12 to play, 99-94, Washington. Welcome, those of you who have been watching Washington Cleveland. Two minutes and 13 seconds left in the defending world champions with a four-point lead. Philadelphia with the ball. They will come up. I don't want to over-dramatize the final 210, but it could be the most important two minutes of the year for Philadelphia. If they lose this odd game advantage in game one, it could be awfully tough. They have kicked away a 13-point lead. McGinnis was backing in. Foul was called. That was a fine defensive play by Charlie Scott. He was forcing George to go to his left, but George insisted to keep going to his right. The thing about the Celtics, though, they just never give up on themselves. They're always there. This is why they're the world champions. Philadelphia, meanwhile, has been under media pressure in this town, and they're liable to come down heavy if they lose game one. This could be a tough sequence now for Philadelphia. Here's Scott off to White. He need up precious seconds. Four-point lead. Hondo at the buzzer. Got it off in time. 76ers can cut it in half. 130 for the ball game. Here is Collins misfiring. But Bibby with a second chance. It's a two-point game. Now 121 to go. Oh, my palms are sopping wet watching this one. To Havlicek. We come down inside of 110. Caldwell Jones got over on Hondo and knocked it out. Here we'll watch Caldwell Jones coming up, out. Fine block helping out his teammate. Now Bibby and Jojo White were squaring off. And White is saying he can and he wants at Bibby. He wants at him. Two referees are right there. Heinz has got to get White out of there. He doesn't want to get anybody kicked out. And he doesn't want to go JoJo now. No way. JoJo, the pressure out. player. White and Bibby squared off. Both coaches out there. Crawford clearing the floor. Telling everybody to get off. Jackson working with him. 109. Zink off on the PA, saying clear the floor. The reason for all of this, the pressures of the playoffs, right? These players, are just, they want to win so badly, and and this just happens. Good friends off the court, but they don't want to hear about this. Here we'll see a little, a little bit going on here. Maybe <laughs> making sure the official was between him and JoJo, though. <laughs> 109 left. There is White. A two-point Boston lead. McGinnis, the 76ers can tie it. Here they come. Inside of a minute. It's the doctor with control against Wicks. The doctor ties it. We are tied in the spectrum. There was never any hesitation on the doctor's part. He said, give me the ball. I'll tie this game up for you. Now the Celtics oh, they'll the run doctor. their pattern. No, they'll take a timeout with 46 seconds left here in the fourth period. 
It has been a fierce, gut-busting afternoon in the Philadelphia spectrum. The Celtics were down by 13. They scratched and clawed and battled back and led by four. And then it was all that talent at the other end, the Philadelphia 76ers, particularly Dr. J. And we are tied at 109. 46 ticks of the clock left, and let's go to Don Crickey in Washington. Welcome to those of you who've been watching Boston and Philadelphia as we come into the final seconds now, 23 seconds to play. It'll be Washington against the Houston Rockets in an Eastern semifinal series opening Tuesday night. As the Washington Bullets were challenged, Cleveland came back and tied the game, but Washington answered the challenge, and they now lead 103-96. And that was a perfect example of what I spoke about earlier. Elvin Hayes with five fouls, attempting to block shots and continuing to do so. And Elvin Hayes comes up with a loose ball. Starts down the court as Little Foot Walker grabs him. Six seconds to play. And there has got to be the most valuable player in this game. Elvin Hayes, the Big E. Doing it all on the offensive board, on the defensive board, blocking shots. Again, I must repeat, playing with five fouls, yet it didn't deter him from playing the kind of game that was totally necessary to win. He missed most of the second quarter with the foul problem. Henderson in the backcourt and Hayes in the front court have been so outstanding. We have six seconds to play. It is Washington leading and winning 103-96. Forty-six seconds left in the spectrum. Tied at 109. The Celtics with control. Now let's see what kind of a play Tommy Heisen wanted in this situation. He needs a basket badly because the 76ers are sure of having time. Here's JoJo White. Oh! Celts up by two and 30 seconds. Now Gene Shue's got to have a timeout. He's got to diagram a play and try to force at least an overtime. Boston up by two. And timeout with Gene Shu down on one knee. Talking now to the 76ers huddled around him. George McGinnis is number 30. The doctor will be out there. He's the doctor who went one on one. We'll get the 76ers right back. I'll tell you, Gene Shu has been very calm. Welcome, those of you who've been watching Washington and Cleveland. This has been an incredible game here in the spectrum. Boston was down by 13 in the second quarter. Came back to tie it, and they went ahead by four. And it was all the magic of Dr. J going one-on-one, -on -one, using the glass backboard. And then the Celtics came back. And JoJo White, with the shot clock running down, hit the field goal to put Boston ahead. 30 ticks of the clock left for the 76ers. Wait. It's hard to hear what Gene Shu was trying to tell his team, but usually, Billy C., and you know this better than anybody, he goes to a clear out play in this situation. It's, it's going to be either for Julius or Doug Collins. One of those two are going to get the ball and. I would say Julius is going to be the one to have it, though. They're going to go to him. He's come down. He converted that last two for him to tie it up, and they're going to go to the doctor. This is what you get paid for. This is what it's all about. Who can rise to the occasion? Time starts. Clear out right side. Up on Wicks. Won't stay in college with a big rebound. Pops back. Won't go down. 19-18. And the Celtics call a timeout. I thought they got Collins had tied it. The ball had just a little bit too much spin. It was down in the hole and squirted back up. It's a shame he, he had so much more time. He could have taken his time, though, and shot that ball. He rushed it a little bit, Brent. He didn't take his time, and he didn't follow through the way he should have. Congratulations to Dick Mata and the Washington Bullets. And for them, Houston is next. Moses Malone and all that game. And whoever survives these two Eastern Conference semifinals then will be matched for the Eastern Finals. That's a good point. Survival. 
because as we've seen with Steve Mix's jersey and Jojo White, Henry Bibby having a few words, the tension's there, it's a very physical game and it's going to get worse. I would assume that there was a six point difference in that game. Uh, I want somebody who puts up the scores to check me on that. I thought earlier I'd seen a different score. Somebody at 104.98 is the correct final score. 104.98. Washington wins and advances. And here Gene Shu is back by two. He can lose the odd game home court advantage. Philadelphia is going to have to go for the steal. The Celtics will have the ball at half court. And either if they don't get the steal, they're going to have to commit a foul. Well, I've got a moment here before the pace picks up. Thanks to director Sandy Grossman and producer Chuck Milton. They've had a whale of a game to produce and direct, and they've done well by it. Now it is the Boston Celtics with control and 17 seconds to eat up. They'll have John Havlicek in his 166 NBA playoff game throwing it in. White, Scott, Wicks, and Collins are out there against Jones, McGinnis, Debbie, Irving, and Collins. I believe they've turned it over. They have. And only two seconds off the clock. I can't believe that Havlicek went for that corner in that situation. Well, he saw Cowan and Bibby, and he felt that he could get the ball to, to Cowan. They can go for the tie now. Irving maneuvers in. Julius has got it. He'll come up to the line. Julius Irving was fouled. Julius Irving can put the 76ers ahead. It will see the slow motion. Julius driving the baseline. Getting fouled and continuing on in after the dunk. Oh, what a game. What Sydney a game. Sidney Wicks, five fouls. Here's the doctor. Everybody up in the spectrum. In the penalty. So the penalty becomes a critical factor. Eight seconds left. Heinsen up. Trainer Frankie Shalant up alongside the Celtic bench. Won't go. We are tied at 111 in timeout. Now the Celtics will come over to the side. And you've got more of the same coming your way on CBS. Detroit, Golden State, and Portland, Chicago still to come. Heinsen now is furious. He's over here arguing that they took seconds off the clock on a free throw. Tommy Heinsen is going to take the clock. Wait a minute, John. Wait a minute. Dave, what was the score? Okay, right. Okay. I gotta tell you, I'm inclined to agree with Tyson. I don't think so. Well, the one thing Heinzen doesn't want to do either is he's a little upset, but to create a situation where the official is going to have to call a technical foul on him. He's already got one, Billy That's C. Right. The doctor with a magnificent performance. Did everything you could ask of the $6 million man except make the free throw after he was fouled. But what a game he has played. Heinsen now will bend down. Six seconds, what do you do? Havlicek, White. Right now, well, Havlicek will take it out. Number one. He'll probably go to Cowards getting him the ball and possibly getting it over to Jojo for a jump shot. I would think that would be their, their plan of attack right now. But you never know. When there's so much pressure out here, John might be forced, as we saw the last time, he couldn't even find anyone open and threw the ball away. He might be forced into getting it to just someone open, and that person's going to have to take it on his own. Gene Shu up, checking up. The timeout situation. Shoe has one left. Another important thing: the 76ers only have three team fouls right now. Very easily, they could allow the ball to commit, commit a foul, and then the Celtics will have it out of bounds. Here is White. Goes up with the shot. Short. Quick. Julius was there. White back up. Oh, oh. it's good. It's oh. good. JoJo White came back up. Put it in. The Celtics have won game one. Boston has won game one. They counted it. They're over here now with Gene Shu. Joe Crawford signal that counted. Heights is saying, let's get out of here. Let's watch it again here. 
Here's the shot by Jojo. It's hard for me to believe that they get this many shots at the basket with six seconds to go. Wicks gets it blocked. And here's Jojo. Is it good? Out of his hands. Oh, out is that of pressure hand. basketball? At the buzzer. In the air. 113. 111. All the drama for Billy Cunningham, Brett Musburger saying so long for the spectrum. It's been an incredible afternoon. More to come. The NBA on CBS is a presentation of CBS Sports. And coming up after this, Chicago and Portland, Detroit and Golden State. Can you stand the excitement, Billy? Shane? I have to get to my TV right now. This is CBS.